I'd like to call the January 18th, 2022 meeting of the Bloomington City Board of Public Safety meeting to order. And our first order of business is election of officers for 2022. So I would love to know if anyone uh, is interested in serving as chair or vice chair for the current year. Well, it's not all speak at once. <laughs> Uh, I would absolutely not like to be nominated for any position. I'm, I'm actually, uh, you know, I'm in school right now, and I'm, I'm actually um, um, trying to weigh whether or not I can be an effective uh, member in my capacity currently. So, okay, thanks for. Your transparency, and we hope you do say. Um, anyone else have thoughts about or interest in one of those roles? I should tell you for me, I told you last year, I was supposed to tell the mayor that I was winding down and I never got around to it. COVID got <laughs> You're stuck, Louise. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but I, you, <laughs> I need to get a hold of the mayor soon. It's been maybe six years. Yeah, so, we've been compatriots there. Yeah. There's some time. It's time for somebody else to, this is, I want to share the, the moment. So that's my way of saying that I, it would be for me only because I don't know how long, I mean, I, as I said, I, I hope to do it last year. I was intending to do it, and I just, COVID and online meant that I never got around to it. This is easy enough, but then it's going to get harder. Like Rafi said, life is getting tricky. I'm okay staying vice chair for now. Great. <laughs> <laughs> well, if you'll have, is Shruti on? Shruti is not on. Does that mean that we can elect her? She's not on? No, just kidding. That yeah, means elect her. Chris, you're muted. I said that means you can elect her. Yes, <laughs> I'm about to text her right now. <laughs> hey, Madam President. <gasps> but the well, problem would th be that if you elect her, she's not here, so the vice president would get to, the vice chair would get to run the meeting this evening. Ah, okay, we'll keep Kim. <laughs> All right. Uh, if you'll have me for another year, I'm happy to stay on. Then ask for a motion <laughs> that Kim remain the president. So moved. Second. <laughs> Do I say all in favor? Kim, yeah, Kim, you have a you have a motion and a second on the floor. Okay. And if there isn't any discussion, you can have yep. the roll call. Okay. Is there any discussion? Uh, all right, sincere, Nicole. Oh, sorry. Just, Go ahead. Uh, uh, sincere appreciation for your service, Madam Chair. Thank you. Um, Thank you. Thank you. That's a second. So, um, Nicole, I think we're ready to take the roll. All right. Kim? Yes. Louise? Yes. Sorry, Louise, I couldn't hear you. Louise? Yes. Oh, okay. okay. Uh, Ravi? Yes. McQuiba? Yes. All right. Do the motion carries. Do I have a motion uh, that McQuive, uh remain as vice chair of the Board of Public Safety? Yeah. Motion to um, allow uh, Ms. McQuiva Reese to remain in her position as vice chair of the Bloomington. Uh, Board of Public Safety. I second. Any discussion? 
Thank you, Ms. Reese, for um, your service and remaining in your capacity uh, as vice chair uh, representing um, us as the board. Second that. Here, here. <laughs> All right, Nicole, would you please take a roll call vote? Uh, yes, Kim. Yes. Louise. Rafi. Yes. Nikweba. Yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. We have officers. All right, do I have a motion to approve the minutes of the December 21st, 2021 regular session? So, so moved. Do I have a second? I wasn't in attendance, but I'll second. All right, any discussion? <laughs> All right, Nicole, would you take the roll call vote? Kim? Yes. Louise? Yes. Rafi? Yes. Mukweba? Yes. All right, motion carries. Now on to police department business. Rafi, I think it's you, but there's an awful lot of chatter. Um, if you could keep yourself muted, it would help. Yeah, it's me chewing. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, Thank it you. sounds like there's a radio or something in the background. All good now. Okay, I'll go ahead and get started with... Uh report on monthly <laughs> monthly statistics and training. In your packet, you have um, the calls for service um, uh, basically for the entire year since we completed December. You can see the difference um, in calls between 2021 and 2020. Uh, December was up by probably over uh, 400 calls for service from the previous uh, year. Uh, going through that <clears throat> nuisance calls, there's a pie chart on that to talk about the uh, disturbance calls, the vandalism, uh, intoxication calls, and noise. Um, the next chart is sideways, and I'm trying to read it, but that's in your, your packet as well if you have questions on that. Um, so we, uh, we continue to stay very busy, as you can tell from the the uh, uh, the data, uh, the arrest reports, December, we had 147 criminal arrests, um, whereas the previous year we had 96. <clears throat> Juvenile referrals were, were way up in December with 21 versus four from the previous year, um, and they were higher than the month of November as well. Uh, domestic violence calls were also up in December, um, and we had a total of 40 of those calls for the month. The hate crime data in 2021, we had zero for the last quarter of the year, and we had three for the entire, uh, the entire year of 2021. <clears throat> so if you look at crime, tr crime trends, uh, we actually had quite a few uh, swastika-related cases where it was uh, vandalism uh, that was uh, swastikas painted on buildings um, around the city. We also had an increase in counterfeit and forgery cases. Going to training, we had a total of 158 hours of training. You can see <coughs> you can see the highlights: um, diversity, equity, and inclusion training. Seven officers went to that. Um, pit maneuvers, which is uh, uh, pursuit ending training. We had seven officers in that. We had um, our regular CERT training for the month, um, and there was no CDU or dive team training in December. <clears throat> Community engagement, we only had two events uh, for seven and a half hours with two of our officers involved. Uh, police social work data, 
Total number of referrals were 24. Uh, total contacts were with 467 uh, individuals. The community service specialists had a total of 288 calls. You can see the breakdown of what they responded to. The majority of those were traffic accidents, um, which has been a pretty good time, pretty big time saver for the patrol officers um, where the, the uh, community service specialists are the ones that are investigating those. <clears throat> uh, that, any questions on monthly stats and training? <clears throat> if I can, uh, Chief, thank you for the report. Um, I noticed that under the, uh, I guess, uh, bias crimes that the, um, the damage that was done to the uh, the mosque. I know that it, was that in Dece was that in uh, uh, that did take place in December, correct, or was that November? Correct. So that did take place in in December. Yes, uh, it was in the third quarter. I I don't remember if it was December or or later in November. <clears throat> okay, well, was that reported as a? I know we it was don't have. Not. It was. It was not. It was a. It was reported as a vandalism. There was there was nothing that was hate related. It was just property was destroyed um, by the individual. <clears throat> okay, so I I guess I'd be interested to know the. I mean, realizing that there was obviously nothing, you know, spray painted or damaged, but under the circumstances that. Um, you know, the mosque itself, I guess, was targeted and nothing else around the neighboring community was. Well, I, that, so we have to follow the FBI guidelines on what the definition right. of, a, of a hate crime is. <clears throat> and it did not fit that. Um, <clears throat> granted, it was the only building <clears throat> that was damaged. Um, when we, when we um, interviewed the, the person responsible, he, he wasn't even aware of where he was when he did it. So um, it, it, the, it doesn't fit the criteria of a hate crime, and therefore it wasn't reported as one as such. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you for that, Chief. Um, I, was, I was concerned about that as well. And because of, <clears throat> uh, because of our watered down hate crime um, in Indiana, my opinion, it just doesn't it doesn't allow it to fit the fit the case. So I'm just curious about the uh, support from Bloomington Police Department, if there is any. Um, not wanting to add anything to your plate, but is there any way to is there a relationship being stewarded with the um, with the center moving forward, just so they feel safe? I guess is my uh, curiosity. Uh, yeah, we <laughs> we have always had a relationship with them. Right. Um, um, I actually had a conversation with with um, uh, someone from there today about something completely different. But they, um, um, the leadership, have my cell phone number. Okay. They, uh, and and we do do tra <clears throat> we do training with them periodically. Um, so we we do um, we do have a relationship with them. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I got and, some water spoke, here, but I don't know if you. I'm sorry. I got water. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm choking on. <laughs> um, but uh, and and we we've done periodic thing where they've invited us to to uh, um, different meetings and things like that. So we continue to do that. Okay. We're, okay. we're very short staff, so it's difficult to do a lot of that right now. But. Um, I have extended that in, or that offer if they need us to come and talk to people that we that we will do that. So, okay, perfect. And then last question, last thought process. Um, I know there's a police task force. Curious if anyone from that from the center is c considering par participating, but we can definitely have a conversation later on just kind of walk talk through that. Okay. Thank you, Chief. Uh, next is letters of appreciation and, accom and accommodation. <clears throat> there are 
two, I believe, in the packet that you can see. Um, one is a handwritten note that um, I'm having a hard time reading with on my screen, uh, but it was. Do you want uh, me to read it? Sure. I, I, this is, it's really touching. Mm -hmm. Our daughter is schizophrenic. She is a senior at IU. The officer have helped her. The officers have helped her many times, treated her properly and kindly. Our grateful thanks to the officers who do a great, who do great work for the community. Sincerely. I can't read, read her mother's mm -hmm. name. So that was one, and then we got another note from a Nicholas Casaval, I think is how you say his last name, where his son was uh, um, involved in an accident, and um, Officer Escavella and Baker responded, and he was very appreciative as to how they uh, treated his son and interacted with him. He was young, uh, a very young driver working on his, his, uh, uh, getting his driver's license. So, um, he was appreciative of how they, they, uh, interacted with him. So <clears throat> that was some pothole. Yeah. That, that particular day we had actually a couple of wrecks in that stretch of the road, um, where this one happened. Um, they weren't only the one was related to the pothole, but it was, it was a rather large pothole. Next is general business. <clears throat> um, again, we continue to be short-staffed uh, in the personnel report. I will go over the officer numbers. It makes us very, it makes it very hard for us to do any kind of community outreach. Um, so those numbers are way down, um, and we're actually getting to the point where we are going to have to start um, not responding to um, some more minor calls, where we refer people online to file reports. Um, so th those continue um, and probably will for the foreseeable future because we just don't have the people to respond to calls. We are in contract negotiations with the FOP. Those are progressing. We started those earlier than normal um, with the hope of being able to uh, provide a um, substantial raise to base pay so that we can make um, BPD um, attractive to new recruits and so that we can also keep the officers that we have. We continue to lose um, our, our staff to other departments who um, pay more and, and um, um, have, have better benefits. When do you anticipate those talks to wrap up with the FOP? <clears throat> um, to be honest, I, don't, I have no idea. Um, there's not a whole right now it's it's all centering around pay um, so we we just continue to have back and forth discussions about um, what that should be so and I imagine you're tracking the impact of not responding those calls that you're not responding to so you can track the impact of being short staffed yes yeah <clears throat> All uh, right. Also general business on February, I believe it's the 9th, I'll, I'll get you the date, um, is when the, the uh, annual public safety address that the fire department and the police department um, and the community and, family, community and family resources department have in conjunction with the mayor. Um, I'm assuming that will be <clears throat> virtual this year. Um, as it was last year, but I will make sure that the board knows when the date, when that date is. Thank you. Purchases, any anticipated? <clears throat> yes, yeah, oh, sorry. sorry. I, just I just want to say that I'm really excited and to hear and when I read it, the diversity, equity, and inclusion training that the officers went to. Thank you. Um, Thank you for letting us know that. Of course, y'all let us know everything, but that I think that that's really good. So thank you for that. Uh, purchases, there's one that's coming up. Um, as you're aware, back, I think it was in June, we had a major flood in the basement of our building where literally the entire basement was gutted. Um, that work has been completed on the remodeling. Um, we are in the process of uh, getting all of pretty much everybody back into that location. 
Um, we had to buy all new furniture, office furniture. So you will see that expenditure coming up. Um, and if I remember correctly, I think it was in the $30,000 range um, for, for new furniture. All right. We're moving on to personnel issues, promotion of Office of First Class James Ridge. Actually, let me go over some data first for uh, with the personnel issues. So we currently, okay. so we're authorized 105 officers. We currently have 88. Um, we have one out on extended sick leave uh, pending a medical retirement. We have one out on extended leave with an anticipated return of March of 2022. Um, we have one on extended light duty. Um, we're not sure of a return date yet on that person as they go through um, uh, treatment for their injury. We have two at the academy, which started, I think it was January 3rd. So they're at the very beginning of their academy training. We have three in the field training officer program. Um, we have two that are leaving for Westfield Police Department in early February. We have one that is leaving for Fishers in mid-February. And we have one that is leaving for Nashville, Tennessee in April. Our current <clears throat> hiring process, we have three applicants um, that were approved by the local pension board um, on 1-7 and they've been it's, um, submitted to PERF for approval. And I think we heard today, I think <laughs> that they got approved. Um, we have uh, one certified officer and two non-certified people that we have um, offered jobs to. Um, that will start the academy, I believe it is in April. Um, unfortunately, right now, um, anybody we hire that is not certified, we will not be able to get them into the academy until um, August 29th. So that will hamper some of our hiring of non-certified people. And why is that? They are full. Are you asking why, why is the academy won't take yeah, people. Yeah, the academy. They're, full. Their classes are full until that that next, the August class. The next on uh, is the promotion of officer first class James Ridge to senior police officer. You have in your packets the memo that was submitted um, for his promotion. I won't, read, I won't read that since it's in your packet. And if you have mm -hmm. any questions, I could, I'll be able to answer those. Chief, I, if I can, uh, I'm sorry, Madam Chair, just to interrupt. Chief, if I can, the, the 88 is not including, uh, or does that include our uh, downtown resource officers? It, it does include the downtown resource officers. Okay. The two, the two police officer ones? Well, it, well, you you mentioned eighty eight out of uh, a total number of uh, I think, right we're, we're staff four hundred and five, and I, I guess I was wondering if that was in, including, you know, the DROs. I we only so the DROs are certified officers, so it does include them, uh, okay. but I only have two right now. So even even that unit has is uh, severely understaffed. Okay, thank you. All right, can I get a motion to promote Officer First Class James Ridge to Senior Police Officer effective January 1st, 2022? So moved. Second. Any discussion? Nicole, will you please call the roll? Kim? Yes. Luis? Yes. Rafi? Yes. McQuiva? Yes. <clears throat> that motion carries. Thank you. Is, uh, is the officer here? Congratulations. <laughs> He's okay. not. I don't see him. Okay, okay. Yeah, but thank you for bringing that up. 
that would have been good to have him here. All right. Thank you, Chief Dekoff. Mm -hmm. All right, Chief Moore. Yeah, Chief Moore is not here today. I'll be uh, staying in his place. Thank you. So monthly statistics, operational statistics, we'll start off with that. 49% um, of our call volume was uh, rescue or EMS. We had 4,821 calls in the city and 685 calls at uh, Indiana University for a total of 5,506 5, total calls. We're up, on, we're up over 1,000 calls from this time last year. So um, that is something that we're taking a hard look at uh, as well. And 63% of those calls uh, at Indiana University were uh, rescue or EMS. Response times, uh, we did not meet our goal for being on scene within four minutes. Uh, we are meeting our goals uh, within the eight minute uh, at 96%. Um, our goal is 90% to be on time uh, or within four minutes and we're at 63%. Part of that we think is, is due to our headquarters displacement of our operational crews and uh, the temporary headquarters that we're in at, at this point, along with road construction on some of the main thoroughfares. Prevention and public engagement statistics. <clears throat> um, we did not meet our inspection goal uh, progress. We were 38% of that goal. Uh, we did, uh, have much of 2021 without one of our inspectors. Um, we just hired a new deputy fire marshal that started last week. His name is Jeff Yutmeyer, and uh, we're looking for good things from him uh, in the future too. Uh, training education. I just wanted to uh, clarify. Um, it looks, uh, when you look at the month of December, we were at 2,160 hours. Our goal is, is much higher than that. Um, what I did, uh, what I did do is a little research. Um, we went back uh, and looked at that because that number was so uh, disappointing and off. Uh, we had a delay in our quality assurance reporting uh, due to uh, the officer that does that quality insurance uh, during the month of December was much out uh, with COVID. And so uh, we were able to uh, just finish that up today, actually. Uh, that number should reflect 4,227 hours and not 2,160 hours, just of note. And that's all I have for statistics. And uh, Deputy Chief Washell, it's always good to, um, just let us know that the information is pending rather than to publish it. Yeah. I'd rather, I'd rather it be incomplete than, you know, for it to be perceived as a, a dark mark on your record because it, it is an outlier. I mean, Definitely is. I appreciate that. I'll take that note. All right. Any letters of appreciation or commendation? Uh, we have none submitted. Okay. I'm sure there are plenty. Thought maybe they emerged, many. maybe. Yeah. <laughs> All righty. General business, if you're ready for it. Yes. Okay. Uh, we do have, uh, just like Chief Deepkoff uh, expressed, we have uh, some staffing issues. We have one out on extended light duty. And then we have five out on extended illness or injury. Um, we are in the process of um, sending seven new applicants for per physicals. Um, we anticipate those results before the end of the month. The local pension board meets February 1st. So Ms. Gray, I may be meeting with you uh, for signatures uh, for that uh, approval process to go to PERF. Uh, the anticipated Recruit Academy start date is March 14th, which is a Monday. Purchases, um, nothing 
nothing of note just yet, but there will be a lot coming forth. Um, we're in that supply, uh, that supply backlog with some vehicles and some other equipment. So you'll start seeing that come through here uh, in the next couple of months. And then and related to the, to the restoration of the headquarters. Not, 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 not in necessarily. Yeah, not in particular. Um, we ordered three vehicles uh, about four months ago, and I still don't have a build date for those. So that's, that's just one example. And then as far as any uh, discipline issues, none to speak of. Great. All righty. Any other personnel issues before we move to the promotion? No. All righty. Can I get a motion to promote Barton Epler to chauffeur effective January 10th, <clears throat> 2022? Ms. Gray, I would also like to know- Is that date that correct? Is it supposed to be first or is the 10th correct? It's it, the 10th is correct. Okay. And, and, and Bart is on this, this call. Mm -hmm. So moved. A second. Any discussion? I have a, I have a quick question, Deputy Chief. Um, thank yeah. you for your report. I so Mr. Epler, he's been in the department for twenty two years almost, and he's moving to Shufer. It doesn't. I am reading the the memo provided. So, and I get these all confused. The chauffeur means that he's going to now be driving the big vehicles. Is that the promotion? Yeah, and and I. I've been fortunate enough to be on a department one year uh, less than Bart. I've worked with Bart uh, for over 20 years. He's an, he's an excellent firefighter. He's an excellent driver. He's, he's driven for over 20 years for us, but this is a, a different promotion for him. So he'll be exclusively driving uh, the, the apparatus now. Meaning right now he's doing both. He's just going to just driving mm -hmm. exclusively. Okay. Excl yeah, he's 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 doing the firefighter duties as well as driving, and this would, would this would put him just as the driver. And that's a promotion to do just that. It, I would say that Bart would say so as well. Yeah. I'm yeah, I'm reading the memo. I'm assuming that's. Yeah, it is. Okay. Yeah. Good. Thank you. He's very he's very good at it. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> Any other discussion? Nicole, would you please call the roll? Kim? Yes. Luis? Yes. Rafi? Yes. McQueba? Yes. That motion carries. Thank you. And thank you, Bart. And congratulations. Congratulations, Bart. Uh, did you want me to unmute him in case he has any? Sure. Yeah. Do we call you chauffeur now? What, what's the title? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Chauffeur is great. Yeah. Sounds okay. awesome. Thank you so much. <laughs> Thank you. Uh -huh. Congratulations, Bart. Thanks a lot. Thank you. All right. Do we have any old business? <laughs> All right, time for the CERT ARV deployment report. In the month of December, we had no uh, deployments. All right, can I get a verbal certification of payroll from 12-17-21 and 12-31-21? Yes. Yes. All right, do we have any members of the public who wish to speak? Uh, there are no members of the public. Okay. Do I have a motion to adjourn? So moved. Thank you. Have a great week, everybody.